You know? What's good? No, I was just, it, do we call this Go Talk? Do we call this Mount Rushmore Talk? What do we call this? How do we describe it? Do we call this 7-Eleven? 7-Eleven Talk? Yeah, this 7-Eleven Talk. Mm. <laughs> this 7-Eleven Talk. Yeah. Yo, I got a few questions for you, though. Oh, <laughs> hey, 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 come on now. Come on now. You come on to, you come on to sin with Kai. I welcome you in as a guest. Like, a little bit, just a little bit of respect between us? No, nah, but I'm just saying, though, because you ain't did no media or, or, <laughs> or, or nothing. So I think it's as your teammate that I should be asking you the questions. <laughs> you, you know what? You... <laughs> Okay, that's fair. I, I had something in my phone, but I, okay, we'll do this. Yeah, sitting with Kai, you know, it, hey, the, the floor is yours. All right. You told me once we uh, uh, decided to play for the Nets that you needed four post-ups a <laughs> night. I mean, eight post-ups a night, four each half. I think that's too much for a six-one point guard. <laughs> and I think that might hold up our offense, but I wonder why you decide to play more of a big than your normal position. <laughs> you know what? I honestly, uh, I feel like my my soul tells me I'm six eleven. I'm seven feet. I'm you. You know what I mean? I'm able to be. I'm able to shoot over people that. You know, small guards. I don't know. I'm not going to just describe who the small guards are, but as I got a little older, I, I feel like I could just shoot over anybody. That So even you, to this point where I was like, man, I want to be more of a, a post-up guard. That's really my game. Mark Jackson type back downs and back you down from half court. <laughs> 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 The object of the game is to get as close Yo, as possible. Yo, you're not backing nobody down from half, man. Stop. No, I am backing, I am backing people down from half court. No, you're not. Bro. Like, you bro. asking for you asking for like clear out duck ins. Like I'm gonna start at the dunker spot, and once you drive, oh. I'm ducking this guy in so I can shoot the hook shot. Like, well, you six feet. Look, look, hold on. Can I ask you a question now? I don't yeah. mean to cut you. When we were playing today, and I ducked in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what play I'm talking about. We were we were scrimmaging today. <coughs> Which one? We were scrimmaging today. You had the ball, and I was running up the floor, and I thought I had the seal. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. I mean, I was gonna throw it over the top, but you really are small as shit, so I really couldn't see. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't think I had a good angle. Plus, you had Chios on you, which you know y'all the same height, so his length was a little bit. His hand was in the way when you tried to duck in. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Let me let me let, let me let me get something straight while sitting sitting with Kyle. Let me get Good something point. straight with Kyle before seven continues. Before we continue this seven eleven talk, this is a safe space where we talk to each other like this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's a safe space. Yeah. But look, I even have to address seven this way. Yo, just show a little bit more respect on the show for the actual host. You know what I mean? Because I'm I just want to be able to just communicate with you about how I feel as a post-up guard. In my past life, like I said, I was you. I was you. I was you. What you are now, that's what I'm up here. I, same mentality. I'm getting to a spot. I'm raising up. I'm getting to a, a, a bucket. My footwork is impeccable. I have length. I'm able to shoot over top, hold, hold the follow-through, and I don't see people. I, 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 do you not feel the same way? I do sometimes, but I'm just saying I don't think that's good for the continuity of our offense if our point guard always want to be it underneath the rim. You know what I'm saying? You know what? That that can come off. That can come off. You get what I mean? I do. You're right. That can come off like I'm trying to implement myself. Just okay, so what about yeah. so what about seven post ups instead of eight? I mean, we negotiated. I think I thought we was gonna do two and a half or a, two and a half post ups a game. The half one is like I throw you the ball in the post and you just throw it right back out to me. No, but I'm also saying I feel like every play down I have a mismatch, no matter who's in front of me. So I think that that mentality mixed with having that post 
guard is a great balance, you know, for our squad, for our offense. Yeah, we're going to see, though. Uh, I think – I mean, I, I know my post-ups are negotiable, but I I think four and a half works, like eight. That – that – what? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. I got another question. Okay, what's up? All right, what's the difference between a New Jersey guard and a New York point guard? Wow. I'm just saying, though. Okay. The difference between a New Jersey point guard and a New York point guard? Yo, Brett just said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he knew I was going to ask you that. <laughs> what up, Brett? Is <laughs> it? Is it? Are we talking East Coast, or are we just talking about specifically New, Jer New Jersey, New York? I said New Jersey and New York. You know that hits a you know that hits a spot for me, man. I'm in both places. My family's from the X, that's the Bronx, and I grew up in Jersey. But you spent most of your time in Jersey, though. I spent most of my time in Jersey being skateboard re. <laughs> 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 Who the fuck is that? <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, bet, bet. <laughs> I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna say this. The lives, just my lives were different. When I was in Jersey, I was able to get away with high crossovers, trying to bot people. And I'm in New York, people were trying to do that to me. <laughs> like and it was hard nosed basketball every single game. Like since I was six years old, seven years old, being in the jungle, being around that entertainment, that culture of basketball, like there's no way you could really describe it. Parents are into the game, the crowd is into the game. We appreciate great moves, you know, high level basketball, high level plays, competitiveness, that mm -hmm. New York chip on your shoulder mentality because I grew up around all of that. You know what I mean? I just had a, a, a great perspective that I, I've been able to implement now in terms of my attitude and my mentality because most of my guys that I was growing up with were in the projects. Mm -hmm. Grinding out of a sense of pride, out of making sure they had got a scholarship to be the first one in their family to graduate. You know, this, this is my father's journey as well, but others from New York City can attest to this. Old New York legends that we're doing amazing things and not just college careers and legacy, but NBA as well. And they paved the way. Mm -hmm. Toughness, you got to get that from outside, playing every single day. Like yeah. that, yeah, like not many people, you know how much, how many people get anxiety? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're in a matchup, you in, you in a matchup against somebody that's literally from the block that's coming to kick your ass in the park that day and you a pro. Yeah. Yeah, one fifty fifth in Harlem, like that. That mentality is: you go outside and you go at anybody and everybody, no matter who. Yeah. In, in Jersey, my dad was like, "Yo, you you can't play to your competition," uh, and you know what I mean, like because Jersey was still being, still yeah. as we had pros, but we were also known as those New Jersey guys that came over to New York. Oh, they soft. Mm -hmm. oh, they, oh, they don't have it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm from Jersey, let him. Until I got to be 17, 18, and I had gone through the Gauchos. I had gone through the Metro. I had so you ran through all of those miles? Because they had done it to me as a kid. You know what I mean? I, I was I was around all of my generation and the little uh, guys older than me. So that's what I was so thinking what, was just the mindset. So what age would you say that you, you realized that you was the best in this area from, like, this East Coast? Mm, I mean, that's... Because you said you played against all these dudes and you didn't see every point guard. Yeah. Did you believe at one point before you was... When you was, like, transitioning from skateboard read to, like, Byrie? Yeah. Skateboard read to Byrie. Did you... Did, what, what, when did you know that you was that guy? What you say? When did you know you was that guy? It had to be, like, high school, right? Bro, I, I'm going to tell you, my talent, in my eyes, 
was different and, and special. I just didn't grasp and grasp and embrace all my tools. You know, I had a lot of different tools that I've been working on since I was a kid. And once I did that, it came with, um, you know, people were a little unassuming, you know, like who, I, I came out of nowhere, sort of say, but I, yeah. I had gone from MK, Montclair Kimberly Academy, St. Pat's to be with the best. Got coached by Kevin Boyle, you know, who's at Mount Verde now. And I was able to take a, a step up in competition in Jersey once I, I joined there's like almost like a triangle between St. Benedict's, St. Anthony's, and, and St. Patrick's at one time in New Jersey high school basketball. And we had Hudson Catholic, you know, all these other good schools in Jersey, Gil St. Bernard, all, all the schools, whatever. But you had to conquer that. And we had a mob my junior year when we won the state championship. And then my senior year, do you want to know what happened? Why, why we, I didn't why, win the states? Yeah, why we didn't end up going to states? Y'all didn't go to state? Bro, we got kicked out of states. My For state. what? Y'all was cheating. See, I knew it to y'all. Y'all probably had somebody else 22 on the team. Don't do that. You got a point guard. Find a two guard with you. What happened? Yo, somebody came in with fake clothing on, disguised as a plumber, and had a camera in the back and was recording us practice. How nuts is that? So that's why I got kicked out the tournament? So they, sent it, they sent it to the state, and then the state kicked us out of the playoffs, out of the state, out of the state playoffs. Wow. That's and we were trash. practicing early. That's trash. That's just straight hate. Like, my senior year, my senior year, I left out of there with a county championship, bro. I was holding, <laughs> <laughs> I was holding up that little trophy. Like, I'm grateful for the journey. But, Yo, like, I know you was hot. Bro, I had I – had, I had 30 in the first half, and, and um, Coach Boyle took me out. I was trying to get the record. I'm like, bro, it's my last high school game. Yo, I got one more, I got one more question before Absolutely. you go. Absolutely, bro. For you, of course. <clears throat> before I get up off your live. Mm -hmm. Yo, when I switched off on you and guard you full court in the finals, yo, was that the best full court defense that, you, that somebody played on you your whole career? <laughs> because when I, because well, when I, when I decided to guard you for that like two, three minutes, like you, nobody had seen you for that for like three minutes. They was wondering what Kyrie was at once I got on him. No, nah, no. Nah, would I, you believe? Would you say that I was top level, elite, Hall of Fame, <laughs> all my badges, pickpocket, intimidator on? I got on perk. I got. Uh, uh, I had pickpocket and, and pick dodger on gold. I'm just saying, did you think that was some of the best defense somebody like a, a opponent ever played on? No, honestly, the way you described that one situation where you picked me up full court, like the one situation Bro, it was like only, it was like five or six possessions. I had to take you out the game. Ever picked me up full court was that one possession in the finals that you're referring to. If that is Hall of Fame worthy of that type of stature of you, Kevin Durant, guarding me. That you got it, bro. You have that. All right, <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate it, bro. But I, I had a few questions for you though. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Don't mind, if you don't mind. All right. Hold on. Let me let me uh let me see this, man. Um I wanted to know about some of your <clears throat> musical influences that changed your, your mindset. Mm. Or, like some of your musical influences, some songs or some artists, you know, that changed your the way. Like, because I remember you were telling me during the finals, 2006, 2017, mm -hmm. into Biggie's Was It Ready to Die album. Yeah. And you were, and you were just, you said that every, every day you were consistently listening to his lyrics and dissecting it. And <clears throat> you just felt like, you could translate that into a great yeah. consistently. Yeah, see, I, when I listen to Biggie, I, you realize he doesn't take a line off. Every bar was, like, perfected and crafted to fit in, and it felt like it was so natural. Like, it didn't feel like Biggie even wrote shit down, but it fit perfectly. 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? You could tell that every bar meant something. So yeah. I tried to, I told myself to focus on each possession, see if, see how mo what the, what's the most I can get out of each possession. And then, you know, outside of Biggie, too, in that finals, Jay Leck had wrote a, had dropped a song and said that um, Jay Electronica. Okay. He had dropped a song during the finals and said it was inspired by my play. And, you know, that's my favorite rapper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's like oh. one of my top five all, dead or alive. That's one of my guys. You know what I'm saying? So well, hold on, hold on. What time what time my ancestors with J Electronica? J Electronica, let me tell you. A guy, preacher. Go ahead. Tell me why he's your favorite artist though. Man, he's Universal Soldier on his album. Mm. That joint and it's just one verse. That joint spoke to me so crazy, but he just he just he just speaking real, just real wisdom and knowledge about how we should navigate in this world. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. as black men who are perfecting the craft and the skill. You know, mm -hmm. and I just appreciate what he brings to the table, and his his journey, his experiences, how he put it in his music, so simple. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Yeah. No respect. Is there anything yeah. you like to add? <clears throat> like, just was there a time when you felt like an album really changed? You know, other than Ready to Die during the finals, like an album that you listened to in the summertime or an old groove that your mom put you on, an old album that just sticks with you where it just is nostalgic. You know, reminds you of that Saturday morning, you know, kind of that type of type, type of vibe when you're getting ready for games or when you're in the car? Yeah. I I think I think for me getting ready for a game it was always soothing music, you know. Mm -hmm. Shit that calmed me down. You know, right before battle so I can get so I can be <clears throat> totally relaxed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Sam Cooke used to come to mind all the time. My grandmother used to play that. And that will always, like, if I hear Sam Cooke, that's instantly taking me back to my childhood, how I used to run to the gym, how every day was just, how can I get to the court? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and that childlike joy that I had for it back then, you know, the same approach that I try to take and lead. And it's tough to do that with so many. Yeah. Just It's just, it's just so much on you in the NBA. It's so different than just going outside and playing with the homies, you know, but I still try to recreate that by listening to music, watching stuff, watching film of old players, you know, studying film with my teammates, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Do you feel do you feel like it do you feel like music and art has a way of helping you create the reality in front of you? Most definitely. It kind of helps you paint a picture visually. Yeah. Because what we, we mean, dreaming is we visualize something and then we got to have the courage to actually go do it in reality. Yeah. So when you continue to hear things that you hear people reach a level of, you know, a level of self where they, where, they, where they know who they are, especially they find out their identity. They know people like, people are. like to call that enlightenment, by the way. Enlightenment. When you okay. reach a level of enlightenment. Continue, yeah. When you reach a level of enlightenment, that shines through and through your art, you know? Yeah. So you could tell the real ones. You could tell the people who actually been through some stuff, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, by how they produce their art, you know? So it's, and there's a lot of people out here producing art and we consuming a lot of stuff. But you continue to find your identity and who you are, you start to weed out the things that you enjoy, the things that move your spirit, you know? Yeah. What do you, and I wanted to just ask you this as well before... <laughs> And I appreciate Seven getting on here and, and sitting with Kai. Um, Thanks, brother. No, I appreciate you. Uh, what do you feel is most contributive to you staying balanced every day? You know, as we go, like you said, you get ready for a battle, ultimately win the war, which is an NBA championship, which is what we're after. Mm -hmm. Bigger than an NBA championship for us, as we both have discussed, for that, the standard of is that you know yeah. that collectively bring brothers that look like us, that think like us, that are aligned like us. Let's let's get together, let's galvanize, spawn a group. But yeah. as an individual, we have a responsibility to come in and do our work as well. Yeah. 
you know, you, you have an ob not an obligation, but a responsibility <clears throat> to just yourself first. Yeah. To make sure that you do that. So what, what do you think is most contributed to that? of you staying balanced every day because I, I, I appreciate you coming in at the same kind of like we're we're here yeah. to, we're here at the court let's work. <clears throat> we're here to make music let's let's work we're here to make art see we're we're here to have a good time let's do it yeah yeah I've had to realize that we're all individuals even though we play on the team you know we all bring something unique to the table that needs to be um, given space to grow. You know, so I like to come into the gym and just focus on myself. And if obviously people will gravitate towards the guys with more experience and the guys that they've seen on these levels, you know. So I try to give each individual their space, but know that some may be watching me. So let me go as hard as I can in each drill. Let me show them through my actions mm -hmm. what my routine has been, you know, since I stepped into the league. And let them know that it may change. You may go through ebbs and flows of just who you are for sure. as an individual and as a person. But you have reference points here, you know, throughout the gym. But I'm never going to be overbearing. I'm never going to want to lure bro. I'll never want to lure bro nobody, you know. I just want to <laughs> let, let everybody grow, but also lead by example. For sure. Just coming in, going to work, not saying much. Try not to argue with the refs in practice. Try not to get too pissed off in situations. You know uh, that. Uh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. We we, we don't. K K, you you stay balanced through through every everything. So we we expect you to <laughs> we expect you to stay that. You know how it goes sometimes, though. No, bro. for sure. Not, and I think that that's the beauty of you know us showing our emotions. You know whether it's on the court or off the court, and and, and being able to balance that. You know, yeah. life has all its challenges. It, it has all of its disruptions, all of its distractions. Yeah. Like I said, individually, we have responsibility to work on ourselves, to continue yep. to hone in on what keeps us peaceful. You know, what is what is love? And it's yep. how do you embrace the people around you to just continue to, hey, I need to get myself right before I get back into this this role that I'm playing in, in life, you know? So I hear you on that, you know? Exactly. Yeah, man. Hey. I, Love you, bro. I'll see you in the morning. You got to, um. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm, I have not many, much words to say except for, I think I might have to paint it, bro. <laughs> Oh yeah. How, how I wrote I wrote I wrote seven eleven. How how long have you been waiting for this? It feels like eternity, bro. It feels like it, man, it's too long. It's time. How long has it been since you stepped on that floor? It's been eighteen months, bro. Eighteen months? Eighteen months. Sick, right? But hey, we here now. Might as well lock in. Eighteen well worth it months that not a lot of people got to see you working your tail off to work yourself back into a condition where you can be growing steadily. Still, yes, sir. Thirty-two, bro. You're still getting better. And that's yo, 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 bro. Oh, come on, yo. Oh my, yo. Well, what? relax with the yo the 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 throwing my age out there so casually like that. <laughs> no, no, I. That's what. Oh, damn, I can't wait till you hit thirty. I told you I can't wait till you hit thirty, <laughs> bro. Well, you can't be on the Forbes thirty under thirty no more. That's gonna hit you hard. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah. they throw they throw the thirty for thirty out. I'm like, damn, yo, I'm getting old as shit. <laughs> yo, how many times were you on that list though? Yo, damn, in my all my whole thirties, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, they don't got no like thirty five and not uh thirty five and under thirty five. You know? Bro, you making your way closer to uh fifty club now? Yo, yo, chick, all right, bro. All right, fam. I'm no, but look, tomorrow, though. Nah, I appreciate you, bro. Much love, and I, I can't wait to get this thing going. I know, you know, I'm excited for our teammates as well, all our brothers that's rocking with us. You know, this is the start of a journey. 
You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I kick it off sitting with Kai with each other. Kept, Bert checked in earlier. So the I same Bert was on. Yeah, for sure. My we boy got Bert, get right, man, so we can get you back on the floor, bro. Yeah. All the homies, I'm sure if they watching, you know, you know, I see y'all in the morning, you know what I'm saying? For sure. You already know how we rocking. We move different over here. Hashtag, you know hashtag, hashtag like work continues, right? Love you, bro. Love you too, bro. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I hope y'all like that. That was cool. That's good, bro. Yeah, man. That was cool, bro. That was cool. <clears throat> so, that's basically how seeing the cars going to go, man. I'm glad everybody tuned in. I don't know what you were expecting. <laughs> I don't know what you hoped for. I don't know what you were praying on. But I'm grateful to be able to share this world with so many great individuals, you know, that are doing amazing things in this world, you know, and I can't change it alone, nor do I, I feel like it's my burden to change it alone, or I'm responsible for speaking on behalf of everyone, you know, or feel like I know everything or anything like that. It's just about being true to yourself and, and staying rooted in, in, in what you know and the tools that you have, knowledge. You know, you could allow the external world to just run you crazy for what? You know, work on yourself, meditate. Write down your goals, paint, sing, hug your parents, hug your sisters, hug your brothers, worry about things that matter, you know, talk with your family, converse about the things that are going on in the world so you can help make it a better place, help see it a better place, you know, talk about uncomfortable conversations about what's going on in the world rather than being worried about what celebrities or entertainers are always doing or being consumed with it, you know, even when I come on here, I don't expect you know, the, the fame and the all this to attract everybody. No, nah, I allow my truth to speak for itself. And I allow my realness to just speak through my relationships and, and what I do. You know, I work extremely hard at my craft, y'all. Extremely hard. <laughs> extremely hard. Extremely hard at the craft. You know, and I have help from my ancestors, from people who came before me from teachers, from guides, from spiritual workers, you know, from people that are blessing the world, you know, healing the world, not people and all that stuff. So I ain't even gonna go round and round about all that, except just focus on what matters, focus on yourself, really. Like, there's a whole war that's going on and I'm, I could go deeper into it and you know, that me as a black native indigenous man, oh, I, there's so much that I had to unlearn and relearn. I had to unlearn and relearn. They ain't some of that stuff out there, that propaganda, all that stuff that, you know, they falsify or make people these big giants of leaders and nah, man, spiritual warfare at its finest praying on people when you guys got to work on yourself work on your inner self have inner standing that's how you have at least some understanding of what's going on understand where you come from first you know when i found out that i was la cora and i was native man and i am native man that changed my whole world my whole view it's not you know i don't play around with this stuff you know i walk out as a black native indigenous man <laughs> Like as it as it stands every single day, I know what the challenges are, but that's why I get up and I persevere. I'm gonna keep getting up, keep trying to knock me down, keep trying to knock me down, keep trying to knock me down, keep trying to knock my people down, keep trying to knock my culture down. I ain't for that. We standing and fighting. We standing and fighting, and it's not about basketball. It's not about any of that. It's about how do we protect our fellow artists out here. How do we protect our fellow community leaders? How do we empower others that know what they're talking about? How do we empower that energy rather than division and all this extra activity and media? And it's just like, bro, I don't play those games. 
I don't play those games. You know, I respect everybody and, and what they do in terms of how they do it, but that is not for me to address. I'm focused on what's up here, moving and leading my community as I seem fit and what's been called for me to do, you know. So I'm not the only one that's out here changing lives either, bro. I'm not. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> – I'm not the only one changing lives, so don't see me as all of this. I, I'm a humble human being just – working on myself daily and I want to share it with you guys in the best way I, I see, you know, what's most comfortable. Not always comfortable being in this position that I sit in and knowing some of the things and just watching and sitting and, and letting them happen. Nah, nah, we're going to change this. We're going to change this. And it's respect to everybody that's joining the fight. And if you're not joining the fight, I, I respect you too, but don't be a distraction. Like get out the way. <laughs> Stop it, you know. Stop it. So I reset. I I appreciate everybody joining in with sitting with Kai. We're gonna have this every so often, maybe. I don't know. But I I, I appreciate you guys. Really, I do. Appreciate y'all.